If you're in the market for a new four-wheel drive wagon, new or old, keep watching because in today's episode, we're gonna go through all the options, the engine, the transmission, the drive line, so you can make a decision on what is gonna be best for you. Now, of course, we have done huge comparisons on dual cab utes before, and yes, we do read the comments. You guys have asked for us to do the similar sort of thing on four-wheel drive wagons, so here we are today. But we're gonna go through the good, the bad, and the ugly of each of these. Now, of course, when you're in the market for a four-wheel drive wagon, you're gonna be looking at more than just the engine and transmission of a lot of these vehicles. But with the prices, especially today, new and old, you wanna make sure whatever you're buying is gonna be really reliable. So that's why we're focusing a lot of our attention on the engine, transmission, and drive line of these four-wheel drive wagons. To ensure you're getting the right information about each one of these vehicles, we're gonna catch up with one of my mates, Rob from Ultimate Diesel Tuning. Now, he's an expert when it comes to all common rail diesels, but especially these wagons, because he sees hundreds of these vehicles literally come through his workshop every single year. This is very exciting. This one here is the Ford Everest. Now, these are really popular, and believe it or not, this is the first time I've ever driven one of these. So. Let's see what all the hype is about. You've got two options of the engine. The two litre bi-turbo with a 10 speed transmission and the five cylinder 3.2 litre Duratorque engine. It's considered that the 10 speed was used to help make up for the lack of engine displacement. More gears means you can optimise the torque output from the engine through the drivetrain. However, Ford recalled over 20,000 Rangers and Everest built between 2017 and 2019 with a 10 speed transmission. This was rectified in the later models, but it's important to consider if looking for a used one. I've got to say, I'm a big fan of this setup. Now it's got the 3.2 litre common rail diesel engine matched up to the six speed auto. So together in combination, it's a great little vehicle, especially when you get these things tuned, they fly. They've absolutely got stacks of power, lots of mid-range torque and acceleration. It's a perfect little mid-size four wheel drive. The six-speed transmission in the Everest is the same transmission that the Ranger and the BT50 had with no factory external transmission cooler, just a heat exchanger. Which means it's using hot coolant to cool a hot transmission. Around town and for light towing duties, this is fine, but for heavy towing where excess heat can build up in the transmission, we would strongly suggest fitting an aftermarket transmission cooler. We've run this one up in the dyno. It ran 91 kilowatts of power before we tuned it and 114 kilowatts of power after we tuned it. The torque number went from 321 newton meters of torque to 414 newton meters. This represented 26% gain in power and 31% gain in torque. Also, the 3.2 litre five cylinder has a variable pressure oil pump, which means you need to be quick with your oil changes. If you don't, you can risk starving the engine of oil on startup, which can destroy it. It's a well-known issue and the best way to mitigate the risk is to change the oil and filter quickly Leave it no more than 10 minutes from the last bit of oil leaving the sump and you shouldn't have a problem. Well, there you go. There is the Ford Everest. Now, you've got to keep in mind that the Ford Everest runs the same 3.2 six-speed auto that you see in the Ranger, which has been a very popular vehicle for many, many years. So, in saying that, you can get a stack of aftermarket accessories. These are a fair dinkum, proper little off-road tourer that would take you just about anywhere in Australia. You gotta keep in mind though, there have been some reliability issues with the Everest, so keep an eye out on that, and if you are buying secondhand, make sure you get one with low kilometers that hasn't been worked too hard. It's worth noting that at the time of this video, Ford has just started to ship the new Everest and Ford Ranger to Australia, with the option of the V6 engine under the bonnet. So, time will tell how they go, but we're keen to get our hands on one to test them out pretty soon. Watch this space. Now, as a bit of a bonus, we thought we'd also include the Toyota Fortuna. Now, as you know, it's based off essentially a Toyota Hilux. And of course, it's a mid-size four-wheel drive, little wagon, and a fantastic little platform to build a tourer. Now, it's got the 2.8 litre turbocharged engine. Um, this is about a 2017 model. We couldn't get a new model. As you can see, this one's had a few modifications as well. It's running a bit of a Hilux front end. It's got bigger tires, it's got lift, all that sort of jazz. Um, fantastic little platform, like I said, but from about 2020 onwards with the Fortuna, especially with the 2.8 litre turbocharged engine, it was a higher output version, which made probably an extra 20 to 30% more power and torque. Now, that same engine is shared by our next vehicle, which is a Toyota Prado. 
Now this one here really is a bit of an unsung hero. We don't give it near enough airtime on our channel, the Toyota Prado. It's a fair ding of four wheel drive and um, I can't wait to get into this one. Firstly, it shows you how many times I've been in a Prado. Bingo, here we go. This Prado does have the high output 2.8 litre turbocharged engine and you can tell straight away it's a completely different motor than the other 2.8. I mean, there's a lot of um, things that Toyota have done to get a lot more torque, a lot more power, uh, a lot more reliability even out of this particular motor. And the result is it's a pleasure to drive. These things are very, very underrated, the old Prado. Now, You'd be forgiven for thinking that the Prado really is a bit of a glorified soccer mum's vehicle with quite a huge price tag as well. But when you actually own one of these or drive one of these things around, you'll get to soon understand that the Prado is a real four wheel drive and a really good one at that. It's a perfect size in my opinion. It's a bit bigger than the Fortuners and the Everest and things like that and smaller again than the 200s and 300s. So it's a perfect size four wheel drive that can be maneuvered quite easily. They have the bigger fuel tank so the range is fantastic on these. Heaps of power, heaps of torque and really truly quite capable four wheel drives. The Prado has a 2.8 litre four cylinder single turbocharged engine in it. It's a 1GD motor and it's been around since 2015. In 2020, they released the high output model and this engine is an absolute, completely different engine to the previous model. So let's talk about the changes to this car and I'll probably go into a little bit more specific detail. The block's been changed as well as that in this 1GD motor. There's also been changed pistons internally in the motor. The cylinder head has also been changed with the head gasket, the oil pump and the fuel injection system. And the big change is the turbocharger has been changed on this vehicle compared to the previous model. So the reason they've changed the turbocharger on this high output motor was the turbocharger in the Hilux, Prado and Fortuna were a little bit unreliable. They've made this change to a ball bearing turbo and it can handle a lot more boost pressure, which in turn has enabled this engine with the changes we spoke about to produce a lot more power and torque. So why this is so significant is we're seeing about 30 to 40% gains in improvement in power and torque over the previous model, which was from 2015 to 2020. Let's have a look at the results of the Prado after we custom dyno tuned it. It started with 109 kilowatts of power and 376 newton meters of torque at all four wheels. After we completed the custom dyno tune, went to 128 kilowatts of power and 452 newton meters of torque at all four wheels. This was an 18% gain in power and 20% gain in torque. The issues we've seen with that previous motor around the DPF concerns and also the turbo issues, this model has actually rectified all those concerns, especially around the DPF and this new ball bearing turbo. The reports back have been really, really pleasing. I can't say that we've seen any concerns with the new high output engine. We have seen some really good improvements in the way of fuel economy after we've custom dyno tuned it as well. But all around, really happy with the new model Prado. Well, there you go. That pretty much wraps up the Toyota Prado. Now, while they might look like a bit of a soccer mum's car, keep in mind, these things are built for the bush. They've got a long range tank. I mean, they're a perfect medium sized four wheel drive. They've got a stack of accessories. You can kit these things up and it'll turn it from looking like this vehicle into a proper tourer. Now, you've got to keep in mind, this is a Toyota and as a Toyota, it's going to carry a little bit of a Toyota tax. Therefore, it makes it a very expensive option, especially when you start kitting these things and specking them out to the Kakadu levels and such. You're nearly up for $100,000, which puts you in the same sort of realm as like a 300 series or even a secondhand 200 series. So, at the end of the day, they, they can get quite expensive, but you're getting a lot of reliable vehicle, which is quite capable for your dollar. Next up, we've got the Isuzu MUX. The new 4JJ3 TCX engine has been specifically upgraded since the previous model and the MUX uses the Azen 6 speed transmission. All right, the MUX, the big Isuzu. Now, it's very similar to the D-Max, which we've got lots of experience driving. <laughs> All right, I know that familiar sound. The big three liter has fired up into life. Now, this is actually the first time I've driven an MUX. I'm, Used to driving the D-Max, which is essentially built on the same platform, but this is a proper little mid-size four-wheel drive. Very popular, and I'm about to find out just why. The previous engine was the Ford JJ1, and there's been some remarkable changes to improvements in performance and power for this vehicle. These improvements are to the block, revised crankshaft, as well as the fuel injection system also, lightweight alloy pistons, and alloy cylinder head as well. Also, the MUX has a forward-facing manifold for better airflow, upgraded turbocharger with a larger rear wheel on that turbo, 
which helps the vehicle to get less turbo lag and improve response for the vehicle. On top of that, getting more torque through the mid-range. Now, one of the main reasons why people buy the Isuzu's is because of that famous three litre motor. Now it's got the, the four JJ3 engine in it. Now, one of the most reliable diesel engines to probably ever be built. The 4JJ1, which is in the old D-Max, was super reliable. They've just built upon that platform and made this one a little bit more refined, but it's got still the same legendary reliability. We've tested these things right around the country and it's never let us down. I mean, we've put hundreds of thousands of Ks on this motor and it's one of the most bulletproof diesel motors you'll ever buy. And uh, that's what a lot of people are attracted to these vehicles because they want something that is not gonna let them down. That's exactly what you're getting with the Isuzu MUX. Isuzu spells out reliability, and these are really a detuned engine. So when we custom dyno tune them, we see about 30% gain in both power and torque, which is so noticeable, especially for those people that are using these for towing. But even if you're using this as a daily driver, that 30% gain in power and torque makes it an absolute pleasure to drive. In standard form, the MUX had 110 kilowatts of power and 462 newton meters of torque. After we completed the custom dyno tune, went to 146 kilowatts of power and 595 newton meters of torque. This was a 33% gain in power and 29% gain in torque. The MUX is a great little package. I mean, it's got that very famous three litre turbo diesel engine, which is super reliable and probably one of the most reliable four wheel drive engines on today's market. However, the price does let it down a little bit. These have increased in price over the years and it's starting to sort of, you know, butt heads with the likes of the Prado and other sort of more expensive vehicles like that. So the affordability edge has sort of been diminished a little bit with the MUX, but that's not taken away from this vehicle. It really is a super reliable package that is great to drive, very fuel efficient and a fantastic base to make a proper fair income tourer. The Pajero Sport has a 2.4 litre four-cylinder single turbocharged engine in it. And it's been in the Pajero Sport and Tritons for around six years, so it's been a super reliable engine. In the performance, the Pajero Sport's got 133 kilowatts of power at the flywheel and 430 newton meters of torque. Well, I'm pretty excited, I won't lie. This one here is a Pajero Sport. Now, I'm excited for many reasons to take this for a spin. I've We've got a long history of taking the Triton off-road and that thing has been, you know, a fantastic little, almost the underdog of the dual cab ute market. And the way I see the Pajero is it's one of the best value for money propositions out there. I mean, you can get into something like this for just over $50,000 and it represents a lot of four-wheel drive for your dollars. But how does it perform? The engine in the Padge is the 4N15, which is based off the predecessor engines of the 4D56 and the 4M41. They are a reliable engine, but the earlier models of the 4N15 were known to crack exhaust manifolds. Mitsubishi thickened their manifolds in the later variants and it doesn't seem to be an issue anymore. Mitsubishi really haven't changed the engine and drivetrain up too much since sort of about 2016. You're gonna see the same 2.4 litre four cylinder turbo diesel engine here, which is a talky little number. It's not gonna set the world on fire, but at the end of the day, it's super reliable. These engines have had nothing but great reviews. And one thing that'll give you a stack of confidence in these Pajeros is they have a huge warranty because I guess the manufacturer really believes in the product that they're selling. And that gives me a lot of confidence, especially if you were to spend the money on one of these, you know that the engine and drivetrain is gonna be covered for, I think it's about 10 years. Out of all the vehicles we've looked at today, the Pajero Sport is the only one with a significantly large transmission cooler, which really helps if you are towing with it to keep those transmission temps down. The Pajero Sports respond super well to a custom dyno tune. Like we see here, we put all cars on the dyno to custom tune them. So let's check out the numbers for the Pajero Sport. In standard form, had 101 kilowatts of power and 325 newton meters of torque. After we completed the custom dyno tune, went to 127 kilowatts and 411 newton meters of torque. This was a gain of 26% in both power and torque. We tune a lot of these and they're really reliable. One issue they do have is they tend to get a crack in the intercooler hose. And what happens when you get a crack in the intercooler hose is it tends to lose boost and it starts to cause the vehicle to run richer. When it's running a lot richer, it causes a lot more soot into the DPF. That in its effect tends to cause a light to come on with the DPF. This is a real easy fix by replacing that intercooler hose. Overall, really reliable vehicle.
Now, believe it or not, this is the first time we've actually tested a Mitsubishi Pajero Sport. Um, it's a fantastic vehicle, but we've had a lot of experience with the Triton, which shares basically the same platform. In fact, the Triton did win our Ute of the Year, and that should tell you something, because this is a very reliable and capable vehicle, and it represents fantastic value for money. In fact, it's the cheapest vehicle out of all the ones we're testing here today. And it's also backed with a 10-year warranty, so that gives us a lot of confidence that this vehicle is built to last. Well, I've got to say, I feel very much at home when it comes to driving this vehicle. Of course, it's a 200 series. It's very similar to the one I've got. Of course, this one is a wagon and not a ute, and what a wagon it is as well. When it comes to four-wheel drive wagons, I've got to be honest, this was my pick. Now, I say was because I still think it's one of the best four-wheel drive wagons ever made. I know, big call. However, just recently, um, they're not making these anymore, and the second-hand prices have gone through the roof. And when I say through the roof, it's ridiculous money. If I found myself in the market for a four-wheel drive wagon, I probably wouldn't consider a 200 series based on price alone because these things are selling for more than they're worth new, even if they've got 100, 150,000 kilometers on the clock. But if you get past the price tag, of course, these are a fantastic vehicle. They've got a stack of room in the back. They've got heaps of power. If you want to be towing a big caravan or go near the maximum towing, which is three and a half tons, well, this vehicle will do it with these. Now, this one comes with the four and a half litre twin turbo V8. And um, unfortunately for a lot of people, they've now stopped making that engine in the 200 series. But let's let Rob have a look underneath the bonnet and um, tell you all the details you need to know. The infamous 1VD 200 series. Now this engine has been in circulation with Toyota since 2007, so nearly 14 years through to 2021. These are a 4.5 litre V8 twin turbo engine. They've also over the years had very little changes to it, except in 2016 and 15 when they added DPFs to it and also injector changes. So the Cruiser's got 200 kilowatts of power and 650 new meters of torque at the flywheel. So now let's run it up in the dyno and see what power it's got at all four wheels before and after we do the custom tune. In standard form, the Cruiser had 108 kilowatts of power and 521 newton meters of torque. After we completed the custom dyno tune, it went to 143 kilowatts of power and 685 newton meters of torque. This was a 33% gain in power and 31% gain in torque at all four wheels. The 200 series is one of the ultimate touring vehicles, but one bit of negative feedback they do get is with the transmission and it's in top gear. In fifth and sixth, they tend to hunt between fifth and sixth gear, whether you're doing 90 to over 100 k's an hour. It's an easy fix. We actually do a transmission tune and a transmission lockup kit, and it gets the torque converter to lock up in the vehicle and to get a lot more direct drive. The benefit of this stops the vehicle from hunting in fifth and sixth, also sees an improvement in fuel economy and gets a lot more direct drive. And the big plus is you see a reduction in the temperature within the transmission. One thing you'll notice about this one is it's got intercooler fan kits. One thing with the 200 series is the intercooler sits on top of the engine. You get a lot of heat and the heat uh, obviously goes upwards. If you're sitting at the traffic lights or in a, a slow traveling speed, you're not getting a lot of airflow over the front of the car onto the intercooler. So it just helps by having the intercooler fans to push that air directly over the top of the intercooler. Now, even though these vehicles aren't being sold brand new anymore, they've ceased production of the 200 series, they still deserve a place in our test because you couldn't do a test on four-wheel drive wagons, in my opinion, and not include the 200 series. Now, I've made a big point that these things are expensive. They're like a good bottle of wine. They've just got more and more expensive with age. But even still, they're not the most expensive vehicle we have in our test. Now this here, of course, is the big 300 series. Now I've been lucky enough to test these things off-road. I've got to say, they are amazing. They go places where you shouldn't be taking such an expensive rig, but they do it with ease. These are fair and four-wheel drives and probably at the premium end of the four-wheel drive wagon market. Now, Rob, when it comes to tuning these things, you and anyone else for that matter can't actually tune a 300 series. Yeah, at the moment, remapping the ECU, we can't do it. It's having access to the ECU to tune it. Having said that, we're obviously doing a lot with research and development in these cars, and one thing I can report back is the fuel economy on these vehicles compared to the 200 series. We've done about 15,000 k's of towing with the vehicle at heavy load, and what we've seen 
on average is about two and a half litre saving per 100 k's over a modified 200 series which, in standard form. Which is fantastic. You've got to keep in mind this is a 3.3 litre V6. It's twin turbo, it's got a 10 speed auto and it's, it's a beautiful combination to drive. A lot of people I guess are a bit negative when the 300 came out because it was a lower uh, capacity and displacement uh, motor in such a big wagon but I guess it does drive very nicely. I think one of the biggest downsides of this vehicle is nothing to do with the mechanics or reliability or the capability of this truck. It comes down to the price tag. Now, at, these things start from about 100,000 and work their way right up to about the $150,000 mark, making them the most expensive vehicle we're looking at here today. Uh, in fact, this particular vehicle here is three times more expensive than the Pajero Sport. Now, Rob, what do you think about these? Mate? You've done a lot of time behind the hot seat. Um, they're a fantastic vehicle. Um, they've obviously got their limitations as well. Yeah, sure. I mean, a lot of feedback from people is the concern going from the V8 4.5 litre engine to the 3.3 litre six cylinder engine. But it's a really, really responsive engine. And power wise, it makes about 158 kilowatts and 600 new meters of torque at all four wheels. And this is standard. What we did find with you know, all our testing we have been doing on this vehicle is as the engagement from the first turbo to the second turbo, there's a bit of a lull. And that's the exciting part. Once we can tune in these vehicles, we feel we'll really be able to improve that and make it even more nicer vehicle to drive back to the nice power gains. Well, hasn't this comparison been a bit of an eye opener? I mean, it's one of the first times in the history of our channel, we've actually taken these four-wheel drive wagons and gone back to back, had a good look at the engine and driveline, transmission, and one thing's for certain, these are very reliable vehicles. They're dedicated four-wheel drives that can double up as a proper little off-road tourer, but more so, there's a lot of power that can be extracted out of these engines because they can be tuned, they are reliable, and I'll tell you what, it's been very, very impressive to see these things back to back. Now, here's the big question. Now, would you like to see us test these four-wheel drive wagons back to back, like a proper four-wheel drive 24-7 off-road test where we get them out, get them dirty, and put all the results in front of you guys? Let us know in the comments below. But for now, that's enough for me. I'll see you around next time.